Moda Nila Fanecha. These are the first words that are meant to be uttered when we wake up in the morning. The very first word, thankful. Moda or Moda for a woman, thankful. And right now, we have to work a little bit more at um, bringing the thankfulness to the fore because it's very easy for all of the things that we cannot do um, and all of the frustrations and some of the anxieties to be what comes forth first because mm -hmm. that's just the way our brains work but moda ani lefanecha can we begin today with a bit of a reorientation and take a moment as we breathe to um, try to bring to mind something that we want to hold up and hold close to ourselves as being something we can be grateful for in this moment, on this particular day. Moda ni lefanecha, Moda ni lefanecha, Moda ni lefanecha. the whole melody and invite you to take a deep breath and let it out slowly and even that process of breathing in deeply and letting it out slowly can help to center us and give us a little bit of calming at the start of this day so join with me as you can Modani Lafanecha Modani Lafanecha Modani Modani Lafanecha Modani Lafanecha Modani Lafanecha Modani Lafanecha Modani Lafanecha. 
Modani Lefanecha Modani Lefanecha Modani Lefanecha Just follow the in-breath and the out-breath. Take a moment just to be present as you breathe in and release the breath. Elohai neshama shenatata bi tohorahi. My God, the soul that you have given me is pure. There's different words for soul in our tradition. And the word that's used in this particular blessing, which is part of our series of morning blessings, the word neshama, if we just change one single vowel, it gives us the Hebrew word neshima, and neshima is a breath. And so it's that breath of life that we are connecting to. We're acutely aware of the gift of breath. We're acutely aware at this time of guarding our breathing. And we are hyper acutely aware of the way in which our breath connects us to all others. And while we may be practicing physical distancing, we can still know deeply how connected we are. And joining together in gatherings such as these online can help us to Keep those connections strong. But even beyond the connections we have with other people, the breath connects us literally to a complex web of every single ecosystem, of everything that is alive. Because our breath and the trees and plants around us are all interconnected through this flow of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And it's really quite an incredible marvel. Too enormous to really grasp. But to simply be, and as we follow our breath, recognize that we are all connected to something so much more and so far beyond ourselves. Elohai neshama shenatata bi tehorahi Elohai neshama shenatata bi
neshama chanata tabi tehorahi Elohai neshama chanata tabi As we continue to follow our breath, I want to invite us to take a little time together in lieu of morning blessings that are words in our liturgy that take us through all of the motions with which we begin our day, opening our eyes and stretching our bodies and sitting up in bed and putting our feet on the ground and taking our first steps of the day, that instead we'll visit those blessings through a body scan. So I invite you to just put yourself in a comfortable seated position, if possible with your soles on the ground. And just close your eyes and bring your attention to the toes on your left foot. And just feel how they're placed, the point of connection with the rest of your feet, the toes on your right foot. And bring your attention to the soles of your feet, the heels. Just feel where they're making contact, the ground. How they stabilize you. And working your way up to the ankles. Just the slightest of motions to feel the interconnectedness of the joints that lead up to the bones of the leg and the calves. And as you continue to scan your way up, noticing if there's any points or places of tightness or tension and with the out breath, just breathing that out, trying to loosen and let it go. Continuing up to the knees, the blessing of knees and the blessing of knee replacements. that enable us to bend and move. And 
and continuing to the thighs and the hips, noticing whether you feel centered and balanced, seated in the chair. And as you continue to the spine, lifting it upward, Noticing the breath that enters into the belly as you breathe in. And then release. The rib cage that protects those vital organs. The blessing of lungs enabling us to breathe, the beating of our heart. You might want to take a moment, just place a hand lightly over that area. And just feel that rhythm for a moment. Continuing the muscles, the side of the neck, gently moving from side to side, noticing if there's any tightness in the shoulders, gently rotating the shoulders. Releasing any tension you feel in the back muscles. And the jaw. So often we notice that we're holding tension in our jaws. Just let it gently drop and release. around our nose and our nasal passages and our ears, our eyes, are they lightly closed or are we holding even tension there? And our foreheads, And just beyond the crown of our head, where that energy that is still a part of us radiates just beyond our own physical edges. Just feel that light and warmth around you. Take another couple of breaths, and when you're ready, I'll invite you to open your eyes. I invite you to join with me in the blessing for Torah study. And then I'm going to offer a few words of teaching this morning before we 
Uh, we'll close at the end with a little more chant. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kedshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzibanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. Blessed are you, eternal our God, ruler of the universe, who has hallowed us by your commandments and commanded us to occupy ourselves with words of Torah. So I wanted to take a few minutes to just reflect on one of the character traits that um, Musa study um, provides us some tools for reflecting with. Um, in Musa, which is a um, practice that's been around for quite a few centuries, but particularly um, since the 1700s, uh, it looks at the human being in terms of a whole bunch of different character traits and gives us an opportunity to um, center ourselves and to um, spiritually refine ourselves through um, exploring one trait at a time. And seeing how it manifests in our lives and every trait we find ourselves on a spectrum. Um, there's never a, a point where we want to be all of something or not at all of something. There's usually some point of balance in the middle. And it's just noticing when we feel out of balance uh, or if we feel that we need to adjust how we respond uh, with regard to a specific trait. So I thought the one we could use right now more than any perhaps is equanimity. And in Hebrew, the phrase that you often find in these teachings that um, best equates with equanimity is a phrase, menuchat ha-nefesh, uh, which literally means calmness of the soul. And, or it could be, calmness of the mind, a settled mind. The nefesh is another of those words for, for soul, um, uh, but menuchat, uh, that word comes from, menucha is the kind of rest that is what actually Shabbat is about, a certain quality of rest. And in that word, menucha, is um, noach, uh, the Hebrew name of the character in the Bible, Noah. And in reading uh, Alan Marinus, who's a, a great contemporary teacher of um, Musa, what he points out is a couple of things. First of all, a, a very nice play on these words and Noah's name. Um, when the flood appears to have ended, the rains have stopped, but the water has not yet subsided, Noah sends a dove out. And the very first time that dove comes back to the boat because the, the, the dove could not find uh, any dry land, anything to land upon. And um, the phrase that's used in Genesis chapter eight is the dove found no rest, Manoach. So it, it was in this state of flux because there was no place to rest. In looking at the Noah story, other commentators over the centuries said, you know, Noah is not somebody who's just exudes calm. Um, they drush on what it must have been like for Noah on this ark and all closed in with his family and his animals. I'm so sorry. That will go away in a moment. Note to self. <laughs> Disengage phone before I do this next time. Um, but Noah must have been anxious. He had no idea what he would find outside that boat. Um, he was essentially in isolation from the rest of the world around him. Uh, he must have been anxious about um, keeping the animals on the ark um, healthy and fed. Um, uh, a certain uncertainty about the length of time he would be there. So while this is 
a story and a midrash, there's a lot in that story that I think we could really relate to in this particular moment. And so the teachers of Musa say, if we're looking at what does it mean to be in a state of manucha or manuchat hanefesh, if we want to take Noah as a potential example, being of calm mind does not mean being completely free of all anxiety. It's not being in a state that's completely free of agitation. Rather, it's doing away with having anxieties that are not serving us. You know, anxieties that are being driven by allowing the anxious mind to take over and run the show. Um, it's interesting that over and over again in different sources, Jewish tradition, when it talks about meditation, when it talks about a state of equanimity, a state of um, calmness of mind, um, it's not talking about kind of spiritual coma. It's not talking about peace and tranquility because that they say is a form of spiritual sleep. You know, we, we should be paying attention to what's going on in the news and what's going on around us. And it should upset us. Um, and we should be feeling feelings about that. Um, we're not trying to escape from the storms and the turmoil of life. As uh, comforting as that might seem, if you're climbing a ladder, you probably don't want to be asleep. And so tranquility doesn't spell the end of our spiritual struggles, but rather it's an inner quality that equips us to handle them. And in order to do that, we need to develop the spiritual practice of being present at all times, which for those of you who already have a meditation practice, you know that that's core to what it is we are trying to do. And so likewise, um, we find uh, some of the other great teachers of meditation practice, uh, like Eckhart Tolle, uh, talks about the watcher. Um, this is our higher consciousness that is above and beyond the thinking mind. And when we can be in that place of being the watcher, we can be mindfully present and better able to access our free will in the midst of any situation. So I would like to offer a brief visualization meditation that um, is something that you can turn to again and again for practicing Manuchat um, nefesh. And so once more, I invite you just to close your eyes, find yourself comfortably seated in an alert, upright position, feet grounded if you can. And to take a few deep breaths. And I invite you to visualize yourself sitting in a canoe close to the shore of a lake. It could be anywhere. For those of us familiar with Hopkinton State Park, you may well have been in a kayak or a canoe on those waters. Notice the stillness of the air, the sun on your face. And as you sit there, you see a motorboat is approaching. And as it passes by, it generates waves on the lake.
You see those waves approaching. And as they pass through where you are seated in the canoe, you feel the sensation of the canoe rocking on the water as they come through each wave one at a time. Try and sense that rocking motion, that movement as they come through. And follow the waves as they continue on toward the shore. Notice the pulling back of the water as another comes in. And continue to watch the passing of the waves as they make their way to shore until there are no more waves. And the calmness of the water around you has been restored. Take in the calmness of the water in the absence of waves. This is your moment to remember. Boats will come in and waves will come and then the calm water will return. The boats, the waves, the rocking of the canoe, these are all part of life. After the boat leaves, the potential for calm water remains. And though your boat will rock, it will not be turned over. Just rocking, just movement. If we can apply that to the waves that hit us during this time, the what ifs, the how longs, the moments of frustration, annoyance, inconvenience, and if we can notice them as just waves, and let them go. When you're ready, join me again as I turn back one more time to our words. In our spiritual journey group last week, this was a melody that we sang and it's the tune that I started with this morning. The Ado of Kidruchi, the Eight Ishan Ba'aira, the Imruchi Gaviati, Adonai Liva Lo Ira. This is the last refrain of Adon Alam. In your hands I place my soul when I sleep and when I awake. And with my soul, my body too. The eternal presence is with me. I shall not fear. La 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 la
of kid ruhi behejishan bihaira behim ruhi kvihati adonai we below ira Bayado of Kid Ruhi, Bahati Shan, Bahira, Bahim Ruhi, Gabihati, Adonai, we below Bayado of Kid Ruhi, Bahati Shan Bahira, Bahim Ruhi Gabiati, Adonai Li, Bahohira. Okay, to everyone. I'm going to uh, pause, stop the recording part.